Hey guys, we are back with another quick color grading tutorial. Today, I just want to go through masking. I want to show you the three, not types of mask, but kind of masks that I do all the time on, I will say like 80% of my grades at the moment. I'm just going to show you a quick few techniques for beginners. If you have used masks before, you might still learn something, so stick around. But my three simple tips on how to go about masking in DaVinci Resolve. So let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and just get started. All right, guys, we are inside DaVinci Resolve again, and we have this simple drone clip. The only thing that I've done is that I've done a simple Rec 709 conversion and made it into DaVinci Intermediate as the color space. Another video on that for another day. I've just, let's just see what I've done. I've just given it some contrast, adjusted the exposure, put on a color lot, and now we're here. I haven't done anything very fancy, basically just these quick adjustments to make it look a little bit nicer. And now let me show you what free mask I always use. So I'll make you a new note. I use option S for that. And I made my own shortcut for making parallel notes. But let me just show you how to add it manually here. And then option A for me is adding a new one. I think this standard keyboard shortcut is option P. All right. So the first kind of mask that I always use is I'll use a rectangular mask. I'll drag it onto the side. I'll resize it. I'll zoom out a little bit here, drag it to the side, and then feather it in. Click Shift H to see what we're doing with this power window. By the way, if you didn't see, we clicked on this one for the power window and then rectangular one. I'll drag it into around the middle, and then I'll click Shift H again. I'll zoom back in so I can see what I'm doing. Then I'll go into our primaries here, and I'll just turn down the gamma a little bit. What I'm trying to do is create some more contrast. And doing that, I want to control the light a little bit more as well. So I know from, I can see that as well, but from shooting this, the light was coming in from the side. So I want to darken this side a little bit. We can use the lift, but we don't want to go too far. And a trick to make sure that it isn't underexposed is to go into the curves, lift the blacks a little bit, and then drag them down here. So we'll have that same effect, but just a little bit more cinematic. So that's the first effect that we've done now, darkening the left side here. Sometimes I do it with the foreground as well, but in this case, we'll just do it on the left side. The second mask is very similar. So we'll make another rectangular one. We'll make this one a long one as well, drag it to the side, feather it in. Usually I go a little bit further with this one and they will blend together because this is a parallel node. So I'll just pull up the gamma for this one maybe pull up the gain a little bit and then we'll do the same thing with the custom curves here drag that down drag it up here and now we're seeing that we are getting a little bit too far so let's try and turn down the gain again and maybe the gamma a little bit as well and we still get that effect to make it a little bit more believable let's warm it up a little bit by dragging the gamma a little bit towards the warmer side the same with the gain like so for some reason, it still is a little bit overexposed. So I think we'll just go back into our normal adjustments and just turn down the highlights to make it a little bit better. And it is already a little overexposed, so that's what we have to work with. But let's just turn up the gamma a little bit more, maybe the gain, maybe actually warm it up, not so much, but a little bit more, like so. And now we have this <clears throat> warm light coming in from the side. Might need to dial it down, but you can dial it in as you go. And if we zoom in on me, you can see that I've been slightly affected as well with this warm light. And that's why we dragged it a little bit over here. And then for the last one, what I usually will do is I will go in and use a power window that is circular. And I'll just drag it up a little bit, make it somewhat smaller and feather it out. See what we're selecting here. We might want to make it even smaller, like so. And that is to affect our subject here, which in this case is me. And I'm not going to tamper with anything in the primaries. We'll actually head straight into the custom curves. And I'll just do a slight bit of contrast work here. So I'll drag this down a little bit towards the shadows and a little bit up here towards the highlights. Maybe not adjust the shadows as much, and then maybe drag up the highlights a little bit just to give it some more contrast. And you can see what a difference that made. Quite a big difference. And I might be a little bit 
too dark now, so we could pull up, if we go into the log wheels, pull up the shadows a little bit, just a little bit, like so. I think that looks pretty all right. This is mostly just to demonstrate what we're doing here. And with these three masks, what we've done is we've gone from this to this. We've pretty much changed the entire scene with darkening this left side, brightening up the right side, and pulling a little bit more contrast and focus into the middle. So I think it gives quite a unique look and you can play around with this. You can cool down the left side here. So we could add some blue into that, or some teal, not too much. Play around with another mask at the bottom, perhaps. Sometimes I make this one a circular one instead. So we could make this one a circular one. Drag this out, feather it in. Maybe make this softening 50, something like that. Make it even more believable that it's coming from the trees up here. I'll just drag it in like this. That's a pretty cool effect as well, if you ask me. It looks maybe even more believable than it coming straight in from the side. So that's another way to use that mask. And for the third mask here, another trick, if you have decided to buy the full version of the Vinci, there is another trick that you can use. So instead of having to use the circular mask, I'll just turn that off. Now this affects the entire scene. But if we go into the magic mask, I can actually just draw a line on me and see how that works. Click Shift H. Didn't do it perfectly, but we can just kind of tell it what we're trying to do here. Maybe click better to see if that works a little bit better. Usually it does a better job. I think maybe we've done a little bit too much work here. But usually it does more or less a perfect job of selecting whatever you're trying to select here. And now you can see that we are only affecting me in this case on this one. So instead of affecting the background as well, we can have full control over who we are selecting here. The only thing you need to remember is to track that all the way. We're not gonna do that right now because it takes quite a while. But when you play it through, if you don't track it, it'll only show up on this particular frame that you selected. So guys, that was my very quick tutorial on how I use masking on at least a lot of my videos, especially my reels on Instagram. If you see my masking parts, that's usually what I do. And it's very simple, but it's quite a unique effect. And it really turns an image around and make, especially if you do these like color grading reels where you slowly reveal all the steps, you will see that it, it gives quite a wow effect. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask them down in the comments or shoot me a DM on Instagram. I'm always happy to help. And if you have anything else you want me to show you in terms of masking or want me to go more in depth of how you can use some more advanced techniques, feel free to ask for that as well. I'm happy to make that. But for starters, I just wanted to make this super symbol for beginners and for everyone to use. So I hope you enjoyed it. Until the next time, take care.